Mr Robert Halfon. Mr Speaker, uh, Mr Speaker, I, I passionately believe that we have to follow the referendum uh, result of 2016, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even though I voted Remain. I voted for Article 50, I voted to keep no deal on the table, I voted against a second referendum and I voted against a long delay to our exit date. My voting record in Parliament reflects the will of the British people because I feel that any, uh, anything else would lead to huge mistrust in our political system. Now, I do also believe that Parliament and politicians are becoming toxic. The 17 million people who voted to leave think that the establishment is against them, too busy playing party politics, determined to stop Brexit. So I would not do anything, and I mean anything, that I believe would undermine the decision of the people who voted to leave. Yeah, yeah. I want a strong Brexit, I want a uh, workers' Brexit, and I want a Brexit that unifies our country. And how do we yeah. achieve this? We achieve it through coal market 2.0, <laughs> through membership of the European Free Tree Trade Area. We'd be out of the political union of the EU, out of the CFP, uh, out of the uh, community agricultural policy, out of home affairs and EU taxation. We'd be out of the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. But as EFTA members, we'd be have access to the single market, safeguarding our businesses and our jobs. And as has been pointed out by my honourable friend for Camborne, it's worth remembering that it was the British who founded EFTA in 1959. Yeah, 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 yeah. Howard Macmillan signed the Stockholm uh, Convention. Uh, uh, Derek, uh, the Chancellor, Derek Heathcote Amory, said at the time we want to be able to share in the prosperity that a great single trading union would bring with it. Now, our joining EFTA would be welcomed by Member States, be welcomed uh, by the Icelandic Foreign Minister, welcomed by the Norwegian Prime Minister. And it's been reported that the EFTA Court President has said that EFTA membership would solve the problem of the Irish uh, backstop. And on freedom of movement, we would take back control because the EEA agreement provides us Article 112, Article 113 with important safeguards, allowing Britain to unilaterally take appropriate measures in the event of serious economic, societal or environmental difficulties or on grounds of public policy, security and health in the case of workers. And it's wrong to think that we would be rule takers. My honourable friend for... Uh, right on a friend for, for Grantham, um, who, who he highlighted that Norway and Iceland alone have derogated from 400 EU acts between them. Uh, he also highlighted how Norway declined to implement the postal, worker, uh, the postal service directive. So it is wrong to say that we are rule takers. We are, uh, it would, uh, in, as membership of EFTA, we'd part, be part of the EFTA court, which is a guidance court, it's not an authoritative court in the same way uh, that the European Court of That's Justice right. is. That's right. And the customs arrangement on our side of the House would be temporary. It would be a temporary arrangement until uh, we were able to solve the issue of the frictionless border and then we would have EFTA membership, full EFTA membership and be able to do trade deals as other EFTA members <laughs> Uh, members have done. Now, F, uh, uh, the common market 2.0 is also a Eurosceptic Brexit. Many, many Eurosceptics over the past few years um, have uh, supported the Norway option. Even UKIP did a tweet supporting uh, the Norway option. Dan Hannan supports, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, supported yeah, EFTA in the past. Douglas Carswell Margaret supported Thatcher. EFTA in the past. Yeah, yeah. And Margaret Thatcher, my honourable friend, yeah, yeah. <laughs> me, Margaret Thatcher herself yeah, <laughs> said in, the, in 2003, writing in her book, oh, uh, uh, how supportive she was of EFTA. And let me quote her, uh, Mr Speaker. These countries now enjoy free trade with the European Union. They also enjoy the unhindered access guaranteed by the operation of the European single market, but they remain outside the customs union, the CAP, the CFB, the Common Foreign and Security Policy and the rest of the legal bureaucratic tangle of EU institutions. And if it's good enough for the right honourable lady, it's good enough for, for me. So joining after we do take back control. It's a workers uh, it's a workers Brexit because we keep workers' rights and the protections such as annual leave, equal pay and maternity. It's a take back control Brexit because we're out of the political union of the EU and we safeguard our jobs and our economy. But it's a, above all, it's a uniting Brexit 
It keeps us together, Remainers and Leavers, brings us together and keeps us in an alliance of democracies. Well said. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.